Hi, I'm Apostle Catherine, and welcome to another episode of Revival Is Now. In this revival, God is restoring what we see in the book of Acts to the body of Christ today. And one of the big things that's missing is the power of God by and large. In the Acts church, healings, deliverances, miracles were happening all the time. And it even says that when people who are sick and demon possessed went underneath Apostle Peter's shadow, they were all healed. So this is what's happening in this revival is it's time for healings, deliverances, miracles. It's time for you to be healed and delivered and receive whatever miracle you need. So today we are going to learn the first step in how to receive miracles from Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Step one is for you to hear and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, some of you may have never heard the gospel and you'll hear it for the first time. But at the same time, there are many of you who have heard the gospel, but there's a part of the gospel you have never heard before, perhaps. And today you'll hear what that is. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God sent his only son, Jesus, as a sacrifice for us to save us, to save us from sin, from going to hell. He saved us so that we could have eternal life. So when we die, we will go to heaven and live with God for eternity. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Number two, Jesus took all of our sins away and we became the righteousness of God. So when you give your life to Jesus, when you confess that Jesus is Lord, you have received this free gift from God that all of your sins are taken away. Jesus was perfect. We were sin. He became sin for us. He took on what we should have taken on, that suffering and that pain and death. But Jesus took it on as a sacrifice so we wouldn't have to. So now when he did that, he removed all of our sins and we became the righteousness of God. He actually calls us, you are the righteousness of God, meaning you're in right standing with God. You don't have to do anything to be my child is how God sees it. You are my child, you are pure, you are the righteousness of God. Before Jesus came, people were bound by sin. There was the law which had so many parts to it and they would try to fulfill the law to be in right standing with God. But because there were so many and because we as humans are naturally sinful in nature, they could never measure up, they could never fulfill all the laws. They would make sacrifices to try to cover up their sins. They would make sacrifices of animals. And that blood would cover their sins temporarily, but it would never completely remove their sins. So people were just living as sinners. Jesus came and he took away our sins completely. The sins are removed, past, present, and future. And now you are no longer a sinner. You are a child of God. You are pure. You're the righteousness of God. And as long as you're seeking God daily, you're giving your life to him, that's how God's always seen you. We are on a journey to be transformed into the image of God. So that means that you may make mistakes sometimes. You may sin sometimes, but that doesn't make you a sinner. As long as you're repentant and you turn to God and you say, I'm sorry, help me, Lord. I don't want to do this sin again. God immediately forgives you, immediately removes your sin, doesn't even remember it. And he calls you the righteousness of God, pure. As soon as you repent, you could have sinned one minute ago, but you repent earnestly from your heart. God's forgotten it already. The next thing that Jesus has given us is he tore the veil in the spiritual realm so that there is no longer a barrier between us and God, communication between us and God. But now we can have direct contact and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. In the Old Testament, the presence of God was in a temple 
It was in the holiest of holies, in a room within rooms. And only a couple priests could actually go to the holy of holies once in a while. No one else could go there. So no one else could be in direct contact with the presence of God. There was a veil you couldn't go through. Jesus tore the veil. So now that means that Holy Spirit has come to live inside of you the moment you receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. And you are one. There's no veil anymore. He's literally one with you and he's always with you. He never leaves you. You can talk with him anytime. You don't need a middleman. You can have intimacy with Holy Spirit without anything else. That's it. Now, you might have heard the gospel before, what I just shared, and think that that's it. In fact, that was me up until about seven years ago. I had only heard that Jesus died for our sins, Holy Spirit lives in us now, and we go to heaven when we die. I only heard that. When I heard the gospel, that's all I heard. I thought that's all that there was. And I'd heard the gospel a lot of times. And then seven years ago, I went to a little house church and there I encountered the power of God for the first time. I saw demons manifest and be cast out of people. I saw people be healed. I encountered prophetic ministry and I was shocked. My spiritual eyes had opened up like never before. And from there, I learned that there is more that Jesus has actually provided for us on the cross. And this is what I'm going to share with you now. Since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures, for indeed we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. You are a child of God. You have an inheritance from God. You inherit all that Jesus is and all that Jesus has. Wow, when you stop to think about that, That's a lot, and that is heaven, heaven on earth. In Jesus, there is abundant life, there is healing, there is freedom, there is joy, there is peace. That's your inheritance. This is the thing, many people do not know that there's actually an inheritance that Jesus provided for you on the cross. So when Jesus went on the cross, and he shed blood, and he was crucified. He was purchasing something massive for you on that cross. There was such tremendous power in that blood. He purchased a big inheritance for you, for you to receive freely as a gift from God by grace through faith, to receive this today and to enjoy it, and to be the biggest light for Jesus to the world, to show Look what life is like with Jesus. So now what is this inheritance? This inheritance is, it says the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that they may have life and have it to the full. He made this sacrifice on the cross for you to have life to the full. Life in abundance. This means abundance in every area of your life. Jesus did not say, I've come that they may have life and have it to the full in this area, in this area, but maybe not these areas. He said life to the full. This means every single area of your life. Like this, health, abundant health. It says in Isaiah 53, 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Stripes, what does that mean? That means that Jesus, before he even went on the cross, he was shedding blood for you before. When there was scourging that he was enduring, he endured much scourging. Scourging means there was a whip. There were sharp pieces on the end of this whip so that when Jesus was whipped, it wasn't just lashes, but there was even pieces of flesh coming out. He was shedding blood. He was going through that horrendous scourging for you to have healing today. Jesus was purchasing healing for you 
when he endured that scourging, he did not do it for nothing. He did it for you to be healed of that sickness, of that disease. He did it for you to be freed of any kind of oppression. That healing is for every area of your body, your, your mind, your soul, your heart. Jesus has paid the price. It says, by his stripes, you are healed. Not maybe you'll be healed. You are healed, meaning this is part of your inheritance. It is your right from God. You, the devil cannot argue it. You, it's like it's a contract, clear in writing. Jesus paid the price for my healing. I must be healed today because of this contract that Jesus has signed here. Healing's mine. This means physical healing. This means mental healing. This means emotional healing. Everything. These are not just words by his stripes. We are healed. This is the contract that you can show the devil and say, you cannot take my healing. It's illegal. This is mine and nobody can take it. Jesus gave it to me and it belongs to me. Another part of your inheritance is protection. John 10, 28 says, I gave them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. You do not need to be afraid of anything when you give your life to Jesus because in your inheritance, God has provided to protect you that no one can take you from his hand. You are in his hands. The Bible says that the Lord directs the steps of the righteous man or woman. So that means that he's literally holding your hand, leading you step by step. Nobody can take you out of God's hand. When you are really surrendered to God, when you are serving him, God, let me tell you, wants you here on this earth for a long time to accomplish the purpose he has for you. Because the more that we here on this earth as believers can do for God, for the kingdom of God, the more souls will be saved and the more the kingdom of darkness will be destroyed. I grabbed hold of this revelation and I don't fear anything anymore. I can be on airplanes, there can be tons of turbulence, I can get threats or whatever from people and I have no fear because I have a supernatural protection from God. The devil cannot pierce through that protection from God that he has around me. I know I have, I have an assignment to accomplish on this earth and it's a lot that God has for me to do. And it's not going to take just one year or two years. It's going to take a while. He has lots for me to do. And so I know that God wants me to stay here and he's going to make sure I finish what I was called to do on this earth. Now, this is why salvation is urgent though, because when you have not given your life to Jesus or when you're not serious about surrendering to Jesus, you don't have that protection. This is, this is one of the great joys of surrendering to God. You, can, you never have to fear about anyone harming you, about dying. You can have sickness and think, well, there's no way I'm going to die from this sickness because I know I have a lot of things that I need to do for God still that he called me to do. Protection is part of your inheritance. Supernatural protection from God is part of your inheritance from Jesus. The next part of your inheritance is provision. Curse is the ground because of you through painful toil. You will eat from it all the days of your life. There was a curse upon humanity before Jesus came. So people would work, they would work hard, but there was not favor upon their work. And it was, the ground was cursed. They, they would just work and work and it was painful and they wouldn't get to reap from their hard work. But Jesus destroyed that curse. And now he, he has given us an inheritance of supernatural provision from him, abundant provision. Now he blesses the work of your hands. So when you work for Jesus, when you're doing what he's called you to do, and maybe that's a mundane job, maybe that's your career where you're at right now, but God called you to do that, he's literally blessing the work of your hands, just as 
Moses had a staff in his hand, it was ordinary. But when he used it for God's will, miracles happened through the works of his hand. In the same way, when you are serving Jesus, surrender, doing what he's called you to do, your work will be blessed. You will reap. There will be protection over your finances and there will be favor upon you. My God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So because of Jesus, because of what he's done, now God will supply every need. And we, we see this example of God saying, bring tithe into the storehouse and see that I won't pour out so many blessings for you that there's not even room in your lap for all the blessings. He also says, what you sow, you will reap. If you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. But if you sow abundantly, you'll reap abundantly. So as long as you sow, as long as you're giving to the kingdom of God, as long as you're working at what God's called you to do, you'll never be in lack. You will have more than enough and there will be favor upon your finances. In your inheritance, there is also peace, perfect peace. I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. So Jesus is saying, I have given you perfect peace. He paid the price for you to have an inheritance of perfect peace, meaning that there can be so much attack from the devil in this world. There can be seasons where you're in the valley, when things are hard, when you're going through fire, when there's heartbreak, when there's loss, when there's death, and just things happen. But Jesus has paid a price on the cross for you to literally always be in perfect peace. Perfect peace means it's not of this world. Peace of this world means when things go good, you have peace. But when things go bad, you don't have peace. But perfect peace means that no matter what, highs or lows, there's a supernatural peace that Jesus has given to you. And as you put your eyes on Jesus, you will access that perfect peace. So whenever anxiety comes in your mind, you should know, no, I have an inheritance of perfect peace. Something's wrong here. This must go because perfect peace has been given to me. It's my right to always have it. In this inheritance, we also have received the power of God living inside of us. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So when you give your life to Jesus, you are no longer like normal humans in the world without Jesus. They are mere humans, but you have become a supernatural being. You are one with God who created the whole universe. Holy Spirit literally lives inside of you and he's full of power. And so now you're living a supernatural life. This is the inheritance. This is part of the inheritance that Jesus has given you, that you would have the Holy Spirit to empower you throughout your days to do anything, empower you to have strength, empower you to have wisdom, empower you to have intellect, empower you to do anything you need to do, any kind of ability, speak. You have God partnering with you and giving you his power. You have Holy Spirit in you to speak to you, to direct you, to lead you to true life every single day, to lead you out of harm's way. You're living a supernatural life, one with God. Also, Jesus has provided authority over the devil. He returned the authority that was lost from Adam and Eve. He returned it to you. So now, the devil does not have any kind of authority over you. You have authority over the devil. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. You have authority now over every attack of the devil. He is a liar and he wants to make you think that he has authority, but that is a lie because he is the father of lies. The truth is, you have the authority. It is part of your inheritance that Jesus has provided for you. So he cannot get away with his lies. He cannot force himself on you and force his way and will on you. You 
are the one that has authority over him. You now have to execute it. This is the full gospel. There is so much of the gospel that many in the body of Christ have never heard. I know this because I was just this open Christian in many different Christian circles for 24 years of my life until I heard the full gospel. And hearing the full gospel changed everything for me. When I heard the full gospel, that began my first step into receiving abundant life from Jesus and walking in it. I can tell you now, abundant life is more than possible. I am living proof. I'm walking in it now. What you've just heard, this really is what Jesus has provided for you. It is accessible to you. It is Jesus wants it for you more than anything. He's already given all these things to you, healing, freedom, abundant life, provision. It is like this. It's like parents who think so carefully about presents they want to give their children on Christmas Day. And they say they spend tons of money on it and they wrap it up all beautiful. And they're, they put the child's name on it and they're so excited for them to open the present. That's like what Jesus has done. He purchased the most expensive gifts for you. He did it just as a free gift for you because he loves you so much. He's wrapped it up. It's under the tree. And there's a name tag with your name on it. But you actually have to look and see your name on it, acknowledge and accept that it's really for you from Jesus because he loves you so much. And then you have to actually open it to receive it. And then you actually have to cherish it and value it to hold on to it, to not lose it. This is for you. It's right there for you now, ready for you to grab and receive revivals now. And it's time for you to receive this abundant life finally, that Jesus may receive the reward of his suffering. He didn't suffer for nothing. It brings him the greatest joy for you to actually receive these gifts that he paid such a price for. It says, as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So Jesus was telling the disciples, preach, preach the gospel, the full gospel. Preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Meaning all that is in heaven, it's here for you now. Abundant life is here for you now. It's at hand. So he was telling the disciples, preach this. It's like what I'm doing today. I'm letting you know. It's here for you. This is what Jesus has done for you. And then Jesus says, and then after you preached, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. So in other words, he's like, after you shared what people can receive, now release it to them. Now that they have faith to receive this, release it to them. The Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Many people are perishing because of the lack of the knowledge of the full gospel. We receive salvation by grace through faith. There are many people who are only receiving part of the gospel because that's the only part that they are aware of and have faith in. So there are many Christians living powerless lives in lack, sick, and oppressed. They will go to heaven because they believe in that. They might have a relationship with God here right now because they believe in that, but they do not know about the rest of the inheritance from Jesus. So they don't have faith in it because they don't know. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. But the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So here, you know the truth today. It's time for you to believe in this truth so you can be set free. And by the way, this abundant life that Jesus has given us, it's it's not just selfishly for us. Like it's not just like this exciting news that we can have abundant life now. It's bigger than that. The more that we are walking in God's abundant life, the more we are shining brightly for Jesus to the world. We're the light of the world. And it's us being a light that attracts the lost. It's not us preaching partial gospel and living in lack and bondage and sickness. The world doesn't want that. That's not attracting. How we are the light How we are the biggest light we can be is by preaching the full gospel and living it out and showing people, testifying 
this is what happens when you give your life to Jesus. I was once sick, but he healed me. I have abundant health now. I was once oppressed, but he delivered me. I have perfect peace now. I was once in lack, but I have abundance in all areas. God's opened up all these doors. There's favor upon my life. That's what will attract people to Jesus. It's time to receive right now abundant life. Today, what you've heard, this is step one, for you to hear that this is for you so you can believe. So right now, just say, I believe that by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. I believe healing's mine. I believe freedom's mine. Say that right now. Declare abundance in my finances is mine. Speak right now, perfect peace is mine. Speak, divine protection from God is mine. Say, I am a supernatural being, Holy Spirit's in me, and I can do everything through Him. I declare this abundant life to come upon you now. I speak, this inheritance of Jesus is yours. Receive it now. I declare sickness to leave you, pain to leave you. I declare all demonic oppression and possession to go. Every kind of spirit of anxiety, depression, addiction, suicidal thoughts, night terrors must go in Jesus' name. Addictions must go. I declare no more lack and I break every curse of poverty off of you. I speak abundance and favor over your finances. I release this anointing upon you and the Holy Spirit to fill you now. Be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. May you know the power of God in you. I'm going to show you now evidence that revival is now and that healing, deliverance, and abundant life is your portion, is your right as an heir of Jesus Christ. From last 12 years, I had a, a growth in my nose where I couldn't breathe and also I lost my smell. So this is the second time I'm coming here to your um, uh, park ministry. So when I went home, I could smell and even my uh, block has gone, I can breathe well. I was shocked, what is this? I could, not that's happening to me and I was so happy. I came to testify. Hallelujah! Join me on the next episode where I will teach you the next steps of how to fully receive healing, deliverance, and the full abundant life that Jesus has provided for you on the cross. God bless you. Revival is now. Revival is now. Your kingdom is here. We will walk in your victory. Revival is now. Your kingdom is here. Let your glory be revealed. Revival is now. Your kingdom is here.